Are we back? I think we're back. Okay, yeah, we seem to be back. I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. Hope you can get your phone back. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that we uh, kind of disappeared for a second there. I was waiting for us to come back. Uh, cool. Oh, wait, I have my own stream open. I was checking on it. Uh, mute that. <laughs> mute that there we go <laughs> okay cool we're back uh, I'm just gonna keep this up for me to reference if we're gonna start acting up but let's uh let's get back to it sorry about that I hope you can get your phone back to <laughs> uh, that is or not TRM English assassin god, the, god damn it <laughs> I hope you can get that back. Uh, hopefully it's not too hard to get to. <laughs> Victoria settles in her seat. You know what, Lee? Shut up. You never heard that tone from her before. Just keep quiet until we reach. She pauses as she examines the map you threw on her lap. Helt? Old station? You feel your heart pounding. Your hands are shaking. That's what she wants. For you to keep quiet? For you not to say a goddamn word? Your hands grip the wheel tight. All the preparations you made for tonight. That's a really cool uh, animation for the road. That looks nice. Your friend Freddy has worked out the ideal place to see them uh, in all their splendor. Away from the city. And when you noticed Holt Station was inside the area, you didn't hesitate. But now, Vic had ruined it. Oh shit, dude. What the fuck? Something hits the Mustang's antenna. Ooh. Ew. What the hell is that? Stop, please, stop! Uh, yeah, we should probably stop the car. <laughs> yeah, it's a bat! <laughs> you slam on the brakes and think if you put your hand in front of the Vic in front of Victoria to keep her from hitting the windshield. You get out of the car and find a dead bat in front of the headlights. The animal had hit the antenna somehow and somehow got entangled. You can't believe it. What are the odds of something like this happening? Don't bats have some like advanced echolocation system like a submarine sonar? Let's start like <laughs> Yeah, they're just like a submarine. Or maybe submarines are just like bats. Submarines are the bats of the ocean, you know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> What starts as a simple grunt in your throat uh, emerges as a helpless scream. Fuck! This is what I get for trying to do something different. We should have gone to the movies. Lee. Vic's whispering. It doesn't take long to see why. Over there. The coyote is watching you from where the dark of the forest meets the light of the moon. Vic, we got this. It's not interested in us. You point to the dead bat. They're scavengers. You hear a growl that quickly multiplies. Suddenly, you're surrounded. It's not the first time you faced coyotes in the woods, but you aren't taking any chances. When I say run to the car as fast as you can, you try to recall the advice you've heard for situations like this. Make lots of noise, wave your arms around. Ah oh, yes, bats, the dolphins of the sky. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One of the coyotes in front of you approaches. Yelling gesture. Um On this probably the ones on this side of the car, the ones that are really close. Yell at the one in the center. Another coyote advances. You look into its watery bloodshot eyes. See, my biggest thing... I don't want to tell her to run too early. But I think this is as close as they'll get. I'd say go to the car. Now! The kind of closest he leaps forward with a uh, savage bite. Encouraged by your screams, the rest of the kind of soon joined the feast. Oh, okay. Nope. 
That's not how you do it. All right, yell and gesture. The ones on the this side of the car, the one in the center. <laughs> I was just I was trying to think maybe she can get there while we're dealing with the one next to us. All right, let's get this one back. <laughs> Wait, on my left. So yeah, that's the one we're dealing with is the one on our left. The one in the center again. Get back, you, you foul beast. These dang coyotes. Shit. Three coyotes advance at once. Yelling or waving your arms around won't be enough this time. Bang on the hood. The trick seemed to work and all the coyotes back down. No coyote advanced this time. It's your chance to get on the offensive. Run to the car. Now! Fuck! God damn it! <laughs> Why can't I get to- I just want- <laughs> I just want to get to the car! The car is the safest place! <laughs> oh, okay. Yep, we gotta play this smart. We can't- be, we can't rush. Um, the one on our left. Oh, it is different. It's actually different at this time. Okay, this side of the car, the one on our left. Okay, bang on the hood. And these dang coyotes. The trick seems to work and all the coyotes back down. No coyote advance this time. It's a chance to get on the offensive. Throw throw a stone. You crouch down and find four stones. You pick them up. On this side of the car. <gasps> throw a stone at the one on the right. The coyote retreats into the dark of the forest. This side of the car. The stone flies at the left coyote, making the one closest to it also retreat. Uh, behind you to the right and the one behind you. Uh, probably just the one behind us, right? One less coyote to worry about. The coyote retreats and you feel more and more confident. Run to the car. <laughs> now! <laughs> you know what? That makes sense. Now that there's no more coyotes. Achieve and unlock. They hunt in packs. You get in the car, close the doors, and Victoria starts laughing. Although you know the reaction is more adrenaline than anything else, you start laughing too, and then kiss her. You start up the car and the V8 roars into life. You resume the trip. Yeah, we gotta wait for those fucking coyotes, goddamn. <laughs> After a few wordless minutes, you suddenly start to remember something. Holt, Vic. We're going to Holt's gas station. Victoria starts whistling. The doubts, the fears, everything seems a bit ridiculous now. You think about the plans you made for tonight and smile. You really like to hear her whistle. I mean, in a few of those timelines, <laughs> I know, they just wanted to scout. Well, apparently not, because they went after us. <laughs> There's a lot of gnats around my room right now. It's really weird. He turns off the car and looks into your eyes. He smiles. And that smile seriously pisses you off. Hell, Lee. Before you can open your mouth, Lee taps you on the, sh on the leg. Wait here, Vic. I swear you won't believe it. You bite your lip and take a deep breath. You see him greet someone. Holt? We had written Holt Station on the map, and he'd thrown it on your lap 20 minutes ago. You'd written it by hand, and it might as well have said Hort Station or Halt Station. Hell Station, even. Lee's handwriting has always been intriguing to you. You remember that time you mentioned it to him, and he responded with a uh, disproportionate anger. A nonsensical rant which involved several philoso uh, philosophers of language, and all because you told him his handwriting was dreadful. But you know where those reactions come from. That night you two got drunk by the lake, and he told you that his father would have wanted to be born ugly. After the initial surprise, you couldn't stifle a belly laugh, and Lee looked down. For a few minutes, he didn't want to tell you anything else. You finally convinced him to continue. 
I always got what I wanted by by just by smiling. Ugly people have to develop their muscles. Unfortunately, those other muscles are the ones that last. You couldn't believe those words had come out of the mouth of a flesh and blood human being. Maybe some poorly written character from a cheap romantic novel, but Lee's father? You picture Lee that night, throwing pebbles from the shore while telling you everything about his father's teachings. <laughs> you what? <laughs> <laughs> All that frustration. Oh, was that the night you got pregnant? You'd both been drinking. Suddenly, you find it difficult to breathe. The interior of the car feels like it's getting smaller and smaller. You need some air. Say hi. Don't be rude. <laughs> Alright. right? Colt seems startled. Hello. This is Victoria, m my girlfriend. Be right back, Vic. You see them walk away with a box they took out of the trunk. And from the effort Holt's putting in, it seems heavy. What's inside the box? What's in the box? You're not stupid. You know that Lee has some business on the side beyond his work as an intern at the university. You heard some rumors, and you had your suspicions. However, you never did too much digging. You preferred to keep it a mystery, something to make Lee a little more interesting. You light a cigarette. Would Lee be a good father? And the question that you still haven't had the courage to ask. Would you be a good mother? Yeah, the worst thing in horror mystery. A box. <laughs> the clicks repeat at regular intervals. Small moths approach the light and get electrocuted. Is that love, Victoria? You laugh and shake your head from the side to side. You think of all the manuscripts you've torn up. You've tried poetry, drawing. History seems like an obvious choice. You don't need any talent to be a historian. Wow, poor historians. <laughs> no, I get what she's saying. It's a different it's a different field. It's a different type of thing. Yeah, you'd never trust the man with mystery boxes. Oh no. Is that one of the men in black? No, he looks different. He's not wearing a suit. Hello? The man talks to himself while holding something in his hand. Lou, have you seen any winged creatures flying over the area yet? For a moment, you think he's asking some kind of tricky question and he remains silent. However, something tells you uh, that he's genuinely asking. You look at the man bathed in the shine of streetlight, and the scene fascinates you. Surreal, some of your old friends would have said. The ones that organized poetry nights and read Latremont. Excuse me, you are... Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Hi. Uh, or Hill. Lou Hill. <laughs> Lou. Bo David Bobby. <laughs> Get out of the sky. <laughs> Bo. <laughs> Writer. Victoria Greenberry. History student. Wing creatures, Mr. Hill? Lou, please. Can I call you Victoria? You nod. I'm looking into about a dozen reports, Victoria. Numerous witnesses claim to have seen human-sized winged creatures flying over the area. Angels? Lou smiles, but doesn't seem to, but that smile doesn't last long on his face. Look there, on top of the trees. It won't take you long to find one. You aim at the area Lou just told you. Everything's blurry, so you decide to adjust the binoculars. Adjust the focusing wheel. Move left. Okay, move right. Can I rotate further right to adjust the focus? You can't focus, try adjusting the diopter first. It's adjusted to compensate for some issues with my left eye. Try to adjust it to see if the same both eyes, then focus. I know, she just immediately is like, here's my real name, here's my social, uh, here's my driver's license. <laughs> you move the aperture left and notice the change in your left eye. Okay, just the focusing wheel. 
Oh. We're getting something. We're getting something. Is this working? Oh, this is working. A little more. Okay, that's too far. That's too far. Go back. Where was the best? No, no, no. That's too blurry. Too blurry. Back. Focus. No. Okay, so that's blurry. Kind of lost where I was. I had like a thing going. There it is. Yeah, this one dude would have killed us. Right. So yeah, at least we know he's trustworthy. Here, stare into my strange but ah. <laughs> Thanks for the one chain. I did get it working. I did get it working. So that's the good news. That was him. That was him coming in to kill us with a Puyo. With a junk Puyo. In a Puyo Puyo battle. What the? It was just a second, but you think he saw something up there. Achievement unlocked. First sighting. Was it suggestion? I don't think they're angels, Victoria. But before I tell you my theory, I need your help. Could you draw in this notebook what you saw just now? Yes. I mean, this is the only guy we can trust right now. <laughs> and at any other time, you would have refused with some witty com uh, comment. But there's something about Lou Hill that invites you to play along. Why is my phone ringing? I see. You wonder if the fact that he presented himself as a writer had something to do with it. Draw the body. Um, let's see. Human chest with huge wings. Small round body with chicken wings. Wide chest with short arms and wings. No, no, no. He's a human chest with huge wings. Um, he had thin insect-like legs. Draw the head. And he had like a, a little owl head. There he is. Why was if we give him chicken wings? <laughs> That's really funny looking. But no, he, he just had a human chest with huge wings. Here you go. Before giving it back, you write some notes farther describing what you saw. Lou hadn't asked for them, but somehow they make you feel less anxious. Hey, Bill's Bolt. Yeah, this game's cool. Uh, this is a little visual novel thingy that came out yesterday. Um, it's a little mystery type uh, thing. I don't know why I'm so bad at describing this game. It's not hard to describe. <laughs> um, it came out yesterday, and I've been following the development of it for a bit now. Um, when I first saw like saw it on Twitter, I was like, whoa, this looks dope. And uh, it finally came out, and I'm like, cool, sweet, we're playing it. <laughs> we're going to play this. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, right? It's such a cool aesthetic, but it's like so well done. Like This game legitimately looks really good. I'm enjoying it a lot. This is cool. This is this is very cool. It has very like oh, it's got it's got a good vibe. It's got a good vibe going. I'm I'm really digging it. <laughs> Lou hadn't asked for them, but somehow they make you feel less anxious. You never felt confident about your work. Hmm. Lou looks at the notebook for a few seconds that feel too long. You think about that time you showed your sketches to your art teacher, and how embarrassed you were in front of the class. Motherfucker. What? Sorry. I was talking to myself. You can't help but blush. He's like, what the fuck, man? Victoria! Hmm? For once, you're glad to hear Lee's voice. For once. God, you, you guys sure are a good couple, aren't you? <laughs> All good? 
Although he seems to be talking to you. Lee keeps staring at Lou. Lou Hill. Writer. Lou holds out his hand. Lee Miller. Historian. Lee walks over and puts his arms around you, his back to Lou. You know he must have been annoyed that Lou introduced himself as a writer. Although, it's hard for you to admit it. You'd like to be hu you'd like to be hugged. You feel safe. Yeah, hashtag relationship goals. <laughs> you think you would also feel safe in your grandmother's arms or in the arms of any other strong woman in your family. But the heat of Lee's body, the hardness of his muscles. You remember all of those biological arguments you hate so much and you can't help but smile. It's like you're cheating when nobody's looking. Come on, Vic. Let's see the surprise. Close your eyes. I... I don't feel like closing my eyes right now. <laughs> Always so nice, Vic. Lee might be, be insufferable, but this time you feel he's right. You walk in silence uh, to the back of the station. Oh, that's cute. There's a mothman out here. I ain't closing my damn eyes. <laughs> we also got attacked by coyotes. <laughs> You're like, let's hang out out on the picnic table outside. <laughs> so, what do you think? Lee's smile stays put. Why doesn't he lose that damn smile? A romantic dinner for two under the same meteor shower that amazed our ancestors. I know, peepers peeled 20%. Also, yeah, look at that good dog. Can we just, like... Can we just, like, get a good look at that dog? Let's see. Let me just... No, nope, that's not it. Let me just, uh, get a good look at that dog. No, that's not it. Oh, probably help if I actually save the image. Save image as desktop. This is a very good dog sprite. I really like it. And it's not a sprite. It's not a sprite at this point, is it? It's just like a good low res dog. <laughs> Uh, where is it? Desktop. Low res dog. There he is. Enhance. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> this is a very good boy. <laughs> I like him a whole lot. <laughs> good boy only needs one res, that's true. Yeah, we'll be safe. Rover's on the job. His... <laughs> I like him a lot. He's very good. <laughs> you instinctively put your hand to your belly. And when you realize that, you quickly pull it, uh, put it in your pocket. You look at the dog tied to the post. Oh, yep, there he is. <laughs> There's that good boy. <laughs> the dog growls in the dark. Oh, see, he's already holding back things. Oh, we're playing Holt again. Chapter 3. You've known Lou Hill for a few months now. The first time you talked to him was at the Moose. Lou was looking for information uh, about some unusual lights in the sky. Nobody would talk to him. Before going to the restroom, you went over to his table and suggested he buys people a drink first. When you got back, Lou was already talking to Rick and Stella, and their tongues uh, sufficiently loosened. Lou raised his glass in your direction and smiled. Although it wasn't you who gave him the nickname, you still feel a little guilty. Since that night, most locals refer to him as Lou Refill Hill. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> Sorry, this is just this is a good one. It's, it's, it's very, like, not that big of a deal <laughs> of a nickname. <laughs> what do you call about the encounter with these men in black? You smile. What does he mean? It had only been a week. You think about how to answer. You know Lou, he loves asking questions. You're going to tell him one thing and one thing only, no follow-up questions. 
Grandma's legs, tell him about how one of them bit a card, tell him to dream about our grandma. Tell him about the dream. I'm nervous to tell them about the actual men in black. Um, because they seem to know things. And we're not supposed to talk about them. So we're not going to. Tell him about our grandma's legs, I think that's something he probably already knows. Tell about the dream. The dream also has some information that he'd probably be interested in. Yeah, the galaxy, they don't seem like, I think these are less of like, the fun Will Smith men in black and more of the, the traditional, uh, fuck you up if you hold back information men in black. The men in black seemed interested in the dream I had about my grandma. Lou listens carefully. You talk about the dream, omitting some details. You don't tell him anything about the stitches in your head. Uh, you know if you did, he'd keep asking questions all night. <laughs> Lou remains pensive. Before he even opens his mouth, you try to change the subject. Red or black? What? The card. Red. You turn over the card. It's red. Good. It's the solitaire my grandma taught me. No one could ever win it. Lou suddenly seems interested. And how do you play? Explain it. Rules are simple. But winning. There's a reason why it's called the impossible solitaire. Let me show you. Oh shit, dude. The objective is to move every card from the board to the discard pile. You can move any card whose rank is one higher or one lower than the topmost card in the discard pile. So let's say there's a five in the discard pile. You can either place a four or a six on top of it. And remember that if there's a K in the discard pile, you can place an A. A comes after K, and the uh, opposite is also true. So, 28 cards to move. Seems easy enough, right? I zoned out. What am I doing? <laughs> Select a card. Um, move, uh, okay, so we have a king. We do have an ace, so let's move this to the discard. So we can go for any twos. We don't have any twos, though. When you're stuck, you can turn over a card from the discard. I, I already forgot the rules. <laughs> if I'm being honest. One higher or one lower. Okay, there's not like a... Okay, so there's nothing I'm missing. It's literally just move higher or lower. Okay, cool. But to turn over, you need to make a bet first. Black or red, which one is it going to be? Lose the bet and you'll lose the game. Okay, so what's the odds? That son of a bitch is almost winnable. Um, We started with a black, so there's one, two, three, four, five black on board. And there's six, there's so five black are known out there, and there is six red out there so the odds are higher that it will be black at least with the information that we know yep so that's a jack um if we go for a queen we'll get stuck what's lower than a queen a 10 i don't have a 10. they probably have to go for the queen and then we're stuck again so you have to turn over a card from the stock um, I think with our known information, we're running one. Okay, so black. Fuck, it's red. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, let's try it again. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> let's try it one more time. <laughs> this could be addictive. Oh, this is dangerous. Okay, we're at a four. 
Um, we can go three, two, and then we'll get stuck. Or we can go five, six, and then get stuck again because we don't have any sevens. So, I think we'll go five, six. Oops. Uh, move it to the discard. We uncovered a king. Interesting. Uh, we have no sevens, so we need to turn over a card. We got red, black, black. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Red. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a 50 50. Um, we'll say black. We got lucky. It's a four. So we can go to the three, two, get stuck again in a different direction. So let's go over to that. This is fun. <laughs> Oh no, this is fun. I like cards. This is dangerous. 4-3? I can see like people getting stuck just playing this forever. <laughs> Go left, left. Do that. Ooh, that's a 2. I don't have a way to... I don't have a way I can put the 2 on top though. Because it's not higher or lower. So we do need to turn over a card. I stopped counting. No, no, those two reds. We did two reds, so that means black is more likely? God damn it. Oh, for fuck's sake. All right, let's leave the game. That's fine. The point is it's impossible. You hear barking from the back of the station. Trent. When they brought him in, they told me his name was Chase. Fuck it, it's Trent for me. You know Trent, right? From the moose? Tall, prominent belly, and a scar parallel to the growth of his beard. You laugh heartily. Lou Hill might be a bit of a pain in the ass, but no one could deny that he was good with his descriptions. You think about the book he's given you. He signed it and everything. Where did you leave it? I call him Trent because he barks like Trent on open mic Tuesdays. Come on, let's go to the garage. And see the machine gun. I forgot that he's building a machine gun. <laughs> Why is he building a machine gun? <laughs> I guess I'm just not a gun person. I'll never understand. <laughs> Chapter 4. We're Victoria again. So this is his idea of a special date. Looking at the shooting stars while holding hands. While holding your hand. Telling you his plans for the end of the semester. You can't stop thinking about the raw strength of the hug from a minute ago. Or how he scared the coyotes away by yelling and throwing stones at them. Hashtag reasons. <laughs> yeah, you know, reasons. So I can shoot all these damn cards. <laughs> Gets bored, builds a gun. I guess that's what people did back in the day before we had video games, right? They just get bored and build a gun. <laughs> no, that's America. <laughs> it's the most American thing I've ever heard. <laughs> you think about your friend May. And all those dark fantasies she told you about. But holding hands like this, smiling and talking and looking into each other's eyes, feels like giving up, doesn't it? You know you're to blame, too. Aren't you playing the perfect girlfriend role? Don't you make eyes at him? Don't you say love whenever you call him? So this is it, Victoria? Is this what you want for the rest of your life? Why don't you make up your mind for just once? You think of May again, of those those women she'd claim to know who could solve your situation using a coat hanger. You wouldn't be the first or the last. The dog barks like a maniac and you appreciate the distraction. A mixture of guilt, anguish, and apathy takes over you. And now what? Why is he looking at you like that? Why doesn't he say anything? Has he asked you a question? Yeah, I know, topical. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Man, for everything that changes, some things just stay the same, don't they? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Has he asked you a question? Uh, answer anything. Could you repeat that? <laughs> I'm not going to answer anything. I said if you're excited about the doors, like the band? 
Sure. Of course you're excited. The Doors, Victoria. They told me they're about to release the, their first album. Okay, it is like the band. It seems they'll be playing in New York. Are we gonna go see them live again then? Oh no. <laughs> that dog's having a time. Even though you try, you gradually stop listening to him. Hesitancy returns, and all those questions. And the fucking dog won't stop barking. Would have been a distraction and now driving you crazy. What the hell is wrong with him? Shooting fucking stars. Why don't you make a wish, Victoria? How about going home, covering your head with a pillow, and sleeping for 18 hours straight? You feel like tr crying and try to calm down. Those eyes. That creature that you thought you saw in the treetops with loose binoculars. Had it been real? Not just your imagination? Oh, that's a face. <laughs> What's he looking at? Oh, now he's mad. Vic! Hmm? You know what? I'm tired of it already. Exhausted. I've been trying and trying for more than ten minutes. Can you tell me what's wrong with you? You stay silent. You need to think. Belize right. It's not fair to either of you. With so much noise, it's impossible for you to concentrate. You know they're all excuses, though. Winged monsters don't exist. It's just your brain desperately trying not to focus on what's important. The sudden scream chills your blood. And silence takes over any everything. Oh shit, he got Trent. Slash Chase. And so it begins. Hey, we're gonna play his Hulk. Have you met Lee, tall guy with the blonde girl? He made zero graphic copies of some docs that used to assemble this beauty. Where did he get those docs from? You bite your lower lip. Do all writers ask so many questions? Lee works at the university in the history department. So the man Onzo, hello, hello, thank you for the follow. We're having a good time just reading cool game. Uh, I'm digging this a lot. Holt! <laughs> I take it you're aware of what we're playing then. Uh, I'm digging this. I'm, I'm very glad that this came out. I'm having a good time. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Yeah, this is cool. I'm, I'm digging this so far. This is this game's got an awesome vibe, um, and I love the the aesthetic it's got going. It looks good, um, and I'm digging this story. It's very fun. Lee works at the university in the history department. Lou adjusts his glasses. You don't know why, but that gesture irritates you. The winnings didn't work like norm like a normal machine gun. Normal machine guns use gunpowder to fire projectiles. Do you know what the winnings use? Centrifugal force. Interesting. Lou repeat, uh, repeats the gesture with his glasses. Today, Lee brought me some uh, Ketchum grenades. Ash Ketchum grenades, we're gonna go get Mothman. Add him to the party. <laughs> Do you know what Ketchum Grenades? Do you know about Ketchum Grenades? Lou shakes his head and he just readjusts his glasses for the third time in less than five minutes. You take a deep breath. Tell him about Ketchum Grenades. Although you can't stand Lou Refill Hicks t Hill's tick, you enjoy talking about your collection of Civil War weapons. Ketchums are similar to footballs in shape. They have to land on their nose to explode. They were highly inefficient. In Port Hudson, for example, the Confederates used sheets of them, uh, sheets to catch them without exploding, and then threw them back at the Union soldiers. <laughs> Lou's about to say something when you hear a scream that makes your blood run cold. You grab the shotgun without thinking twice. It's coming from the back. Come on. You don't have a good feeling about something about it. Something's not right. Yeah, that's that's the face they should be making. That's not a face you should be making. 
Trent, no. Oh, that's spooky. Oh, that is an image. Although it feels like a dream, somehow you know. The creature is real. Your dog's suffering is real. And there'll be no waking up from this. Shoot at the creature. You aim your gun. Clearly Trent's not gonna be fine. <laughs> Shit. We don't have a clean shot. Okay, we're gonna run to Trent. <laughs> Hear the muffled moans of your dog. Oh, Trent's still alive. I thought he was dead. I thought this I thought this dog was dead. <laughs> I know, he's just taking him. And I'm like, hey, give him back. <laughs> you cannot have. Hey, Pingu. Hello, hello. You're coming just in time. The monster's here. <laughs> And the fury blinds you. You drop the shotgun and grab onto the chain. Son of a bitch is going to strangle Trent. Uh, ask the rest to help us. Come on, hurry. But before they arrive, you, you feel the pull. And the floor disappears under your feet. No, hold on. We're going for a ride. <laughs> Damn, I didn't think that was the right answer, but I wanted to see. I wanted to try, because that'd be an interesting one. Although you manage to hold on for a few minutes, you finally let go and fall into the thick of the forest. Tree branches penetrate your body, and you die before reaching the ground. Yeah, I didn't think that would work. <laughs> yeah, we gotta release the chain. Halt! You know you should hit the floor soon. Don't move. Listen to Vic, Holt. His sister's a nurse. No bones seem to be broken. I'm a dog. Victoria and Lee help you to your feet. Lou doesn't take his eyes off the winged creature for a single second. He, he let go! He just let go! What? One second? I know where your dog is, Holt. Wait a minute. Get, uh, got something in the car. Let's go. A gift from Freddy. Cool, right? Try to get up, but you feel dizzy and stumble. Victoria gives Lee a disapproving look and helps you keep your balance. Follow me. Thanks. You would have liked to smile at her. After all, Victoria just wants to help. But I can do it by myself. You get your rifle and walk with the rest into the blackness of the forest. We should go in. <laughs> I'd be surprised if we get to this dog alive. <laughs> In that direction. No. I think we should go that way. Lee. Now what? The place where Trent fell. I've calculated it by projecting the point where the creature dropped it on this map. You've calculated? You've calculated, you say? Weren't you a writer? Lou, don't mind him. Do what you want. Sorry, I'm just downing my drink. Constantly checking the map, Lou leads the group on. We should be close. There! Your heart is pounding. Please. Compress his chest. Use both hands, just like that. How curious. Did you know what the uh, the card cardiopulmonary resuscitation receive? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Syllables. <laughs> Procedure discovered by Doctor Knickerbocker back when he was trying to save a dog. As he speaks, Luke carefully examines the tops of the trees. It was at John Hopkins University. Victoria rests her hand on yours and moves her head from side to side. You stop pressing for it, uh, a few tears roll down your cheek. The interesting thing is what happened to the dog afterwards. I guess we'll just let him talk. Shut it, Lou. Lou adjusts his glasses. You look at Victoria. You are too afraid of your voice, uh, afraid your voice would break, break to say thank you. Why didn't you shoot? Why didn't you try to blow the creature's brains out? Deep down, you know that it's just the guilt talking. That maybe there was nothing you could have done different to save him. Lee! Have you seen Lee? 
You stand up and look around. Lee's gone. Oh shit, he went off on his own. Why would you do this? God damn it, Lee. What an asshole. <laughs> you walk faster to keep your thoughts at bay. What the hell is wrong with her? Why does she even listen to him? Writer, says the fucker. What a loser. You walk through the woods confident that you will be one of, uh, be the one to find Holt's dog. What then, Vic? What a weird little what weird little face will you make? Oh shit, it's the men in the black. The men in black. Hello? You feel like someone is watching you. You're walking through a dense forest area where the darkness is almost total. You walk even faster than before. Finally, you reach the clearing and look at the sky. The meteor shower is gaining intensity. Your heart is in anguish and you find it hard to breathe. Are you watching the Leonidas, Victoria? Are you? You hold your head in your hands. Yeah, have a good cry. The last time you cried like this, you were 16. Achievement unlocked. Macho cry. Nice. <laughs> you didn't see the pop-up, but I got an achievement called Macho Cry when I chose to cry. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you come home early and found him hitting your mother. You tried to separate them, and your father took it out on your ribs. His blows were like a rain of sledgehammers, and his breath reeked of alcohol. He pushed you against the wall, and you ended up on the floor. Your mom was clutching your head when your dad took a deep breath and kicked you in the stomach. Won't hit you in the face because it's the only thing you got going for you. And one day, you won't have it anymore. You carry your father's photo in your wallet, not remembering how good he looked. Hell no. Whenever the pain was too much, you'd scratch his entire face until his features bleed with the cuts from in the paper. What the... You seem to hear something. A kind of rumor. Yeah, crying as I snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> you think of the noise hands make when they shake the dust off, the, uh, off an old volume. A river? You try to think about the map you got in your car. You can remember seeing a river here. By the west, sure, but here? As you get closer, you hear it more clearly. You feel a kind of calm. Not peace, but numbness. Suddenly, the whitest light you've ever seen floods the ground. Even when there's no river nearby, the sound is deafening. What? The light pulsed with painful intensity, as if millions and millions of red ants were sinking into their little jaws into your skin. Pain turns into light. You want to scream, but you have no mouth, nor larynx or lungs, and the white that precedes everything consumes you. You don't know how long it takes. You feel the urgency of what is yet to be, and white makes you desperate. Hi. Hello, goat. Oh. Oh, he, he up. He knows how to up. <laughs> how noble, how majestic. You feel the white light leaving your body, and you hear your own voice screaming at the top of your lungs. There they go. There goes the men in black. You drop to the floor and cover your head with both hands. You're filled with a sense of completeness that you cannot explain. We all need a little darkness. Ooh, that's freaky. Wonder what's going on with Vic. Since uh, Lee's having a time. <laughs> Lee! <laughs> Where's that idiot? That's oh, fine, he's just getting abducted. <laughs> Calm down, Victoria. Lee knows how to take care of himself. That's right. Lee's going to show up eventually. Did you know that he chased away a pack of coyotes with screams, some stones, and a blow to the hood of his car? Lou smiles. You wonder if it's authentic or a calculated gesture to show some empathy. 
Holt? What? What's your business with Lee? Holt looks at you for a few seconds before answering. You think of one of the computers at the campus. The IBM 7040. You know what it's called because you once wrote a poem with that title. <coughs> Sorry, I had to clear my throat for a second. Holt is like that computer. From the outside, it's impossible to tell what it's evaluating before giving you an answer. I shouldn't tell you anything. Holt lowers his voice. But you should shut Lou up back there. And I'm going to make an exception. Holt tells you about Lee's business, the sale of original Civil War pieces, the xerographic copies of historical documents, achievement unlocked, no secrets. Don't worry. He knows what he's doing. You hear twig snapping. Who's there? Grandma! Oh shit! <laughs> She's gone goblin mode. <laughs> the sight of Holt's grandmother holding an old rifle mesmerizes you. The whole thing looks like an image from some uh, wide painting. A wet dream for almost any of your classmates. An image that not only defies gender stereotypes, but also demolishes social constructs like that of a grandma in classic stories. The expression on Holt's grandmother's face changes. Her features soften. My legs! Grandma! Holt picks up his grandma and helps her, helps her sit against the tree trunk. He looks at his dog's corpse and beckons you to come closer. I need you to buy, uh, bury Trent before carrying on. You nod your head. How do you feel, ma'am? Confused. Here, Victoria. You didn't hear him approach. You grab the handkerchief without thinking twice. A strange feeling runs through your body. Shouldn't you have at least considered some other option? Clean up her legs. You rub the handkerchief against her calves and gradually remove the mud stains. Grub harder. I was probably your age when I stopped feeling my legs. Holt's grandmother sighs and closes her eyes. Have you ever seen so many moles together? Lou speaks in almost in whispers. You wonder why. You're scared? I know, old ladies are the scariest thing. <laughs> Let's go. Lou picks up the old rifle and examines it briefly. Holt looks at you with an expression you can't quite make out. Are you okay? No, you're not okay. But what are you going to tell him? That you're pregnant? That your boyfriend is missing? That winged, creature, uh, that winged creatures out of old pulp magazines are apparently more than just fiction? You walk for a while in silence. What was... Try to think of something else, Victoria. Two minutes ago, you all started hearing the screams. Noticing sudden movements in the treetops? We're almost there. Oh shit, dude. It's Batman. You find it hard to believe what you're seeing. Why are all these creatures flying over the gas station? Interesting. Holt punches Lou in the shoulder. What? Interesting. Did you find it interesting what they did to Trent? We're not in one of your cheap books, Lou. A sudden silence befalls the group. Uh, let's suggest a plan. Listen, no, you just cover me. You close your fist tightly, trying to exercise the impotence you feel. Was that hard for him just to hear that what you had to say? You shake your head from side to side. What's even the plan? Running with his grandma in his arms? Why does he have to be the hero? Holt! The shriek chills your blood. Fuck! Lou looks at, looks at you as if waiting for something. How many bullets in your rifle? Three. You just burn the gas station. <laughs> Get the torch. <laughs> Hope it's enough. Holt and Elise are halfway to the gas station. Two winged creatures on the street lamps. The light, Victoria. These creatures seek the light. Uh, take aim. Aim for the lamp. 
and for the lamp on the right, and okay. So, let me use the cursor. I believe this is us. That's Holt. These are the Mothmen. So I think the first thing we need to do is get rid of the closest lamp on the right. Three, two, one. You have two bullets left. Um, let's go aim for the center lamp on the right. Shoot. Three, two, one. The wind creature flies to the farthest pole, and it does so over Holt and Elise's heads. Desperate, you run to help. No! <laughs> The wind creatures rush at you. The pain blurs your vision and you lose consciousness. Damn it. Okay, so we can't have them fly overhead. Um, because that'll cause us to run over. So we need to take out the center lamp. Shoot it. Three, two, one. Get rid of that first. Blue take aim. Closest lamp on the right. Three, two, one. One. The wind creature just takes flight to the farthest pole. You have one bullet left. Uh, take aim. Farthest lamp on the right. Three, two, one. All right. The wind creature flies to the farthest pole. The two creatures fight. Uh, take flight and get lost in the night. There we go. That's what I was thinking we needed to do. I just did it in the wrong order. All clear. Help me with Holt and Elise, uh, and, and let's inside. Fast! Is someone going to make a wish? You laugh under your breath. You look at Holt, uh, oops. What did that say? You laugh at Holt as he looks away. Uh, you wonder if he's pissed because you saved him. You still can't believe everything that happened tonight. And you know that as soon as you stop to think, you touch your belly and fight back the tears. Lou looks at his watch. The Leonids are reaching their point, the point of the highest intensity. The screeching is deafening. Freaking creatures! I think I saw one in the dream I told you about, Lou. Who stares at Holt's grandmother. Are you sure it was a dream? Lou's about to add something, but suddenly falls silent. You approach the window and rest your hand on the glass. You can't stop looking at their dance. Before meeting Lee, you had some experiences in college. Experiences by which you sought to open the doors of your perception. Lee doesn't know, and you don't know if he would react if you, uh, how he would react if he found out. But the strange dance of the cre these creatures in the sky beats anything you're experienced while tripping. Oh, chapter 8. We're Holt again. And they called him the, uh, the Warivo of the Hills. What he, what he did lack a ritual component. It had nothing to do with the taxidermy business, even less with the mummification. The shrunken animal heads were art, sold as collector's pieces. One afternoon, Liam, his only nephew, stole a bear head. The head had been emptied of viscera, and was floating in a solution that, uh, uh, his uncle used in the early stages of miniaturization process. Liam lifted the head out of the bucket, wiped it dry, and put it on, like a helmet. He stripped naked, left the house, and ran into the village. Hey, Jabbert! Hello, hello! Um, I think the Mothin... I think the Mothin men are heckin' us... I, I messed up this analogy. <laughs> I destroyed this analogy. How you doing, Jabbert? This game's dope. This game's spooky, and it's really cool. <laughs> it came out yesterday, uh, and I've been following it on Twitter for a while, so I was really excited to see that it came out. And on the same day we finished our last game we were playing. He stripped naked, left the house, and ran into the village. Liam entered the church in the middle of the mass, screaming at the top of his lungs, waving his arms up and down as if they were clawing. One of the congregation members pulled out a gun and shot him. You remember the sheer terror you felt when you saw the bear man running towards the altar. 
This is worse. These aren't the Mothmen that we saw like two seconds ago. One of those is a Wendigo. Ugh. Worse. Worse than what? Change the topic. <laughs> you don't feel like retelling something you already went over in your head. What about you, Lou? I know, crazy. You would think. They should have gone back in time and released it back then. What about you, Lou? I guess you heard some things, right? Lou adjusted his glasses. Lou Refill Hill. You think I don't know what they call me in town? It may be true that some people make up stuff to get a beer. But imaginations have limits. And in the long run, we tend to rely on real experiences when telling a story. Mothman. Yeah, the buff cat on the left. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a, he's a card. He's definitely a character. <laughs> They're somehow related to Leonids and the gathering of all these creatures. Maybe he's right, and all the creatures outside started to appear after the er uh, aerial dance of these Mothmen. Ask why Mothmen. Mothmen. Why the name? Moths are attracted to light. You look at the sky, illuminated by dozens and dozens of shooting stars, and you nod. You like the name. Not because of Lou's explanation, but because you know it's easy to squash like a moth. This isn't the first time the Mothmen have appeared during the Leonids. Ask what he means. Among some other references, they are mentioned in oral histories of the Ojibwe. Collected in the diary of a Jesuit uh, missionary in 1683, who even dares to draw them? Many believe that the creatures described in this diary are Thunderbirds. But the Jesuit's drawings look much more like Mothmen. And the most interesting part is that he draws lines around them. Some researchers think these lines are kinetic, a way of representing the speed of the creature. Lou slides a finger across the glass followed by the following the trajectory of the stars in the sky. But I think these drawings depict Mothman with the Leonids in the background. We're talking 1633? 1666? Maybe? Check on Grandma. Grandma. Better? What are those shrieks, love? It's painful for you to see how confused she is. One second. You turn on the radio. Static. Move dial to the right. Dial to the right. To the right. No matter which way you turn the dial, all you hear is static. You never sung at the moose. Hey gamer! Welcome to spooky spooky time. Welcome to spooky cryptid time. I love this game. This is this is a super dope game. Welcome, welcome to spooky story time. Uh this came out yesterday. Um and it's got an awesome aesthetic and a cool vibe going. They actually think they're a 1957 Ford Thunderbird that transforms. <laughs> they're under the they're under the uh, control of Meta of Metatron. <laughs> you never sung at the moose, not even on those nights when everyone egged you on and the booze in your system had drowned your inhibitions. Almost without realizing it, you start singing the lullaby Elise used to sing to make you sleep. Although more than 40 years have passed, the words come to your mind one after another. You close your eyes and caress her hair, singing all the time. As soon as you feel the rhythmic breathing of your grandmother, you get up. What was that? Hey! I was wondering what was going on with Lee, and how he would get back. Victoria tries to hug Lee while he babbles something you don't understand. At no time does he look up. Where the hell have you been? Victoria. I thought... But he's here. Give him some space. Thank you. Lee takes a few seconds to start speaking. I think I got lost in the forest. Babe, take it easy. Victoria grabs his arm and Lee tries to smile. I thought I heard the sound of a river. And I felt someone looking at me. After walking for a while, the noise was deafening. But there was no river. 
and he starts to cry. Victoria tries to calm him down. As soon as he regains his composure, Lee keeps talking. And then came the white. I don't know how to explain it. It was as if I could see everything and nothing at the same time. And a goat looked up to the sky to watch the shooting stars? Uh, it stood on two legs, like this, you know? Just like us. The hell is going on? I think the time has come. Let me tell you a few things. Lou clears his throat and begins to speak. <clears throat> Although you can't stand his tics or his false dramatics, you want to know what's going on. The Leonids occur every 33 years, some are intense like those of 1833, or the ones in 1866. The others are weak, 1899 for example. And, uh, and those are the ones we have records of. He knows that Victoria grabs Lee's hand. Lou walks over to the window and points to the sky. And this year, they're intense again. 1866, 1966, why 100 year difference and not 99? That one year discrepancy bothers me too, and I think it has to do with the problems of our calendar, and the periodic adjustments that we are forced to make. Tell me, have you ever seen a medieval manuscript? No one answers. Just as you're about to open your mouth, Lou continues, they are usually adorned with warrior rabbits standing on two legs. Do you think these are rabbits came from the imagination of medieval scribes all alone? Those rabbits existed, and they were annihilated by man. Each meteor shower spawns new bipeds, and it was one of these storms that mankind arose. What makes us different from all of them is that we survived, by destroying any other biped that came along, or by reducing them to the realm of gossip or fiction. Outside the creatures began to, f began to fight. Why? What motivates them? And what about Lou? Should you believe everything he says? After all, Lou is a writer. Your grandma's cough sounds like the noise of a tra tractor's engine refusing to start. Grandma! You have to kill them all! <clears throat> the voice of, uh, with which she speaks seems to come from much farther back in Earth. Oh, I gotta adjust my voice for her. We had a secret weapon. <gasps> and we would use it to finish off the upright beasts but they diced to te but they decided to test it in the war elise what are you talking about i wanted to take the winnings from the battlefield and they your grandma caresses her legs i just want to finish the mission victoria and lee look at the look at each other Lou walks up to you and tells you almost in a whisper. I bet the moles on your grandma's legs correspond exactly to her grandpa's wounds. Did you ever tell Lou about your grandpa's legs? About your grandma's legs? You're confused, and Lou seems to notice. It's not just free beers at the Moose Holt. People tell me things. Lou speaks softly, but his words resonate loudly in your head. The moles on your grandmother's legs... Grandfather's legs riddled by bullets in the Civil War? Could it be that Elise's grandfather was talking to you through your grandmother's body? The Winnins. The Winnins! A project that had obsessed you for so uh, for a long time, and now you think you know why. You decided not to think too much about Elise, her grandfather, the moles, the men in black. You're terrified that beyond behind all your decisions, something more than your own free will was at work. Come on. Oh shit, we getting the, the thing out. The winnings. Quick, let's get her out. No. It's still not working. What do you mean it's not working? It has some kind of safety mechanism, and I still haven't been able to assemble it successfully. Here, see? The L's. You look at Lou with curiosity. On the blueprints, there. The elves are the rubric for a secret society found in the middle of the last century. It's not so secret if you know about it, is it? Lou doesn't answer you. Why the L? <laughs> yeah, here's your L. <laughs> take it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take those L's, you know? Some say it's because of the way the knight moves on a chessboard. 
Others say it's because of Lewis Carroll. Carol. Carol. <laughs> the author of Alice in Wonderland. Exactly. Let them keep talking. Luke closes his eyes, holds a hand to the bridge of his nose, and clears his throat. Can this guy be any more affected? A stick I found that weighed two pounds. I sawed it up one day, in pieces eight of equal weight. How much did each piece weigh? Everybody says a quarter of a pound, which is wrong. A riddle at this moment? Victoria strokes her chin and Lee nods his head silently, as if he's counting something. Do you think it's time for a riddle, Lou? Lou raises his hand and moves aside. You take a deep breath. It shouldn't be that hard to find the right configuration. What am I rotating? Oh, I'm rotating this thing. Oh, it clicks into place. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, we just need to figure it out. So, interesting. I think the thing, damn in pieces. What are we trying to do? We have L's. Back. Examine pieces. Uh, first row. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what that, like, hint up top is. Uh, let's just start trying to connect pieces. Let's see if these connect at all. Like that connects there. Back. First row. Third piece. Those connect like that. Which means if we go to the second row. I'm gonna just try to line them up and then we can figure out from there. Yeah, riddle. Riddle me this. Um let's see. Let's just yeah. Trying to make L's. Second row, first piece. That seem right? I guess so. I'm a little curious. Uh, left, left. Same in pieces, third row, second piece, left, left, same in pieces, third row, third piece, left, left, left. Okay, so those are all lined up. Yeah, just scooch stuff around until it works. Exactly. Um. So we got everything lined up. I just don't know if it's like lined up correctly. That's kind of the thing. I think it is. Don't know why it wouldn't be. I also don't know where to start with this, so. We'll test it. The mechanism locks into place with a click. Okay, cool, we got it. Even locked rotation of the earth, something, something, something. Although outside the creature shouts are getting louder, he can't help but feel a certain happiness. The winnings is finally complete. Now, now, everybody out. Elise stands next to the winnings holding a rifle. Lilu and Victoria stand back a little. You crack your knuckles and take a deep breath. At the helm of the winnings steam powered machine gun, you feel something strange. You find it hard to put in the words. It's as if somehow, the present has given way to the past. Oh shit. Rabbit men! They are weak creatures. Cannon fodder in the war against the upright beasts. Um. Is it my left? Right, okay. Nope, nope, back. Aim to left, okay. Shoot. Center. Shoot. Are you gonna help, Grandma? Oh no. Uh, 
Right. Shoot. Got to be efficient with those bullets. Left. Shoot. Center. Shoot. All right, yeah, see, oh. Beware of the dog men there behind the rabbit men. The dog men are more resistant than the rabbit men. And if you hurt them without killing them, they get mad. Uh, let's see what that means. Okay, so rabbit men just get deleted. Dog men. Oh. Eat this bullet. I'm here to cover, but you don't. But don't get too confident. I can kill one upright beast, and then I need to reload. Okay. So dogmen, we have to make sure that we can kill in one hit. Um. She can only take down one. Hey, where are you going? Oh yeah, the other's one inside. I mean, to be fair, they're not helping. <laughs> but we can go for center, take down the uh, rabbits. Um. I think first we should try to take down some of the rab some of these dogmen. Kill one. Yep. And then that one will be wounded and charge at us. She'll take him down. Die! Yeah, I don't know what to do here. Um... I think we go for the dogman, right? Save the rabbits for last. No, because the rabbits are going to come in. She won't have ammunition for them. Yeah, no, that's right. Although you tried to defend yourself, the jaws of a creature close around your neck and you bleed to death. Yeah, I, I, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so... I think first thing we need to do is take down the rabbits. And then we can take down the dogmen. Right? No, because the other one's going to come at us. Yeah, we got Monty Python. Yeah, so that's not right. How... Shoot. How do we do this? How does this work? Because if we kill the rabbits, the dogs are going to come in and she can't protect us from the dogs. Oh, okay. Her buckshot does just straight up kill a dog. A dog man. Okay. So we don't need to worry about dog man. If she can protect us from one. That's good to know for future puzzles. She can take that down. Uh, that is a Wendigo. The two men and the woman. Gone. Deserters. Uh. No, I trust that the other the others are going to do something. I think we just need to hold our ground. Stay shooting them. You take a deep breath and try to focus. And those creatures over there, moose men. If you manage to wound them without killing them, they go crazy and run like a stampede. You can take advantage of them to generate a chain effect. So if we aim right, we'll deal enough damage to wound it, but not kill it. And it'll run over on a rampage. Interesting. So, no, 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 aim left. We should have sent Elise in to check because we can handle the moose men. Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> okay, never mind, we're good. It was smart of us to... 
That's a Mothman. Owlman. Resist like dogmen or a mooseman. But if you hurt them without killing them, they fly to the front. So be careful. Um, aim to the right. Yeah, get him, Elise. <laughs> Take him down. Die! No, then we get swarmed. Yeah, we need to think. We need to think harder than that. There's a moose man over there on the right, but I think we'll kill him if- No, no, because the dog men take two hits. Actually, not on the right, on the left. Um, yeah, so the moose man will go on a rampage, and they'll, he'll take down everything that's being a problem, I think. Elsie? Is it Elsie? L L Z L L L C oh, I mean I can't read apparently because I've been saying that the whole time. Fuck. What is this one? Alright, we want to go to the one with the least resistance, which I'm pretty sure is to the the right, right? Because I'll kill the dog man. That'll kill everything in the way it'll kill it should wound the moth man take down the moth man but then we get swarmed by the rabbit the center would the center work i don't know one wound kill wound kill Oh, it doesn't wound Mothman, though, because they tank it just perfectly enough. Okay, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, actually. So if we aim to the, not the right, the left. I keep on thinking his right. That should wound the Wendigo, and the Wendigo will go on a rampage. Oh no, it died against the Mothman. That's not good. I thought it would be able to kill it. Nope, I miscalculated how much damage that would be able to do. All right. Okay. So, step one, shoot down the center. Step two will probably be go to the right. Right? Go to the right. We should be able to take down the Mothman, because it'll be one, two, wound, kill. And then the Dogman will move up. She'll take down the Dogman with Buckshot. Um, which means we can aim to the left. Back. I think we can handle it from here. Send Elise. You shake your head from one side to the other. You know what the, the Lou, you know that Lou was the first to leave, and the helplessness eats you up inside. Go look for them. But if we're going to fight here, we all, we fight all together. Lee has a gun. Lee does have a gun. Oh, I didn't think that was going to end the... I, I did not think that was going to end the uh, encounter. <laughs> I don't want to keep running away. I should be out there and win my red badge of courage. The Red Badge of Courage is the title of, uh, that, of the, that Civil War novel you read and reread over and over again. It tells the story of a Union soldier who flees to the battlefield. From that first act of cowardice, the only thing the protagonist longs for is to receive a war wound. The definitive proof that he'd become a man. Your Red Badge of Courage? You want a real Red Badge of Courage, Lee? I'm pregnant. Your head spins. You find it difficult to organize your thoughts. You're going to be a father? You think of your own father, of all your suffering. I, I don't know if... I'm a coward, Vec. Lee, did you know that Stephen Crane wrote the Red Badge of Courage without ever having set foot on a real battlefield? The first time you saw Lou, you wanted to twist his arm and... Oops. You wanted to twist his arm and bring him to his knees. Now you smile and put an arm on his shoulder. Thanks, Lou. Come out and fight! None of you move. Out, I said! My red badge of courage. Lee, don't! 
Uh, pull. You pull. At least rotates her shoulders and stumbles. The rifle points at the ceiling. Pull. You pull. At least pushes with a force that takes you by surprise, and the rifle points at your chest. Fuck. You hear the shot, shot and you fall. But damn it. Push. Oops. No, it's pull then push. I forgot the first step. Okay, pull. At least rotates your shoulders and stumbles. The rifle falls and points to the ceiling. Push. You push. At least loses her balance and the rifle points at her body. Pull. You pull. At least loosens her grip and you stumble. The rifle points at the ceiling. At least lunges at you with an unbelievable force and makes the rifle point at you. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Pull. Rotates her shoulders and stumbles. Push. Loses her balance. Rifle points at her body. Push. You push and you hear a shot. Fuck! I guess this is what we have to do, though. It wasn't Holt's grandmother, Lee. Your hands are shaking. You didn't fire the rifle. However, somehow you had been able to feel the different endings. You knew that in one of them, Elise would be shot, and yet you didn't stop. Arrgh! She's alive. They shot me! The resilience of the possessed. You don't know why you're surprised. After all, Holt's grandmother is possessed by her own grandfather. A soldier who fought in the Civil War and was mowed down by a machine gun. The same machine gun whose bursts you now hear outside the gas station. Tearing apart creatures not mentioned in any biology textbooks. Eat bullets, you sons of bitches! Chapter 10. Now! You don't think about it too much. As Holt fires the Winnin's machine gun, you run as fast as you can. If you want to survive, you have to get away from there. The only word you can think of to describe what you see is pandemonium. And not only in the traditional sense, a place of noise and confusion, but in the original sense of the word, the place where all demons congregate. Lee tries to make himself uh, heard over the gunfire and, sh and the shrieks of the creatures. To your left, Vic. Left. Oh, God. You feel jaws closing not far from your neck. Left. You try to run faster. Get down. You duck down and you feel the claws of the creature uh, graze the back of your neck. You keep running. Right! A pig man tries to grab your arm, but you manage to get away. You're almost there. You get in the car and slam the door shut. You hear a knock at the jump, and you jump at your seat. Let's go, let's go! Lee speeds up, and the pandemonium is soon behind you. You think about Lee's previous car. What a clunker. Now you know how Lee managed to buy a car like this one. Holt told you. Poor Holt. The Leonids, upright beasts, intrafamiliar possession, experimental weapons, the Order of the Elves, men in black, and mothmen. There they are, the topics of my next book. You touch your belly. With all that you suffered tonight, loose comment seems a bit inappropriate. You travel in silence for a few minutes. Are you alright, Lee? You look a little pale. Lee takes a few seconds to answer. I don't know. Uh, I'm a little confused on what her deal is. <laughs> on what's going on with Elise, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Lee scratches his head. I can see things before they happen, Vic. Lou leans forward. It's not that I see the future. I don't know how to explain it. It's like I can see several presents just before they happen. Come on, babe. Victoria. What you're saying, Lee. Have you felt it since uh, the episode you told us with the white light? These hands are tightly clasped on the steering wheel. It's not like I can control it. The first time it felt, uh, I felt it was in a struggle with Elise, and the second when we were running to the car. Lee looks you in the eyes and suddenly you can feel all his pain. And some of the presents, the creatures, Vic. Lee's voice breaks. The creatures. And he begins to cry. Lay a hand on Lee's shoulder. You, f uh, you feel him gradually calming down with the contact. He rests his hands on your hand and you stroke his cheek. After a few minutes, you move your hand and settle back in your seat. You look for Lou in the rearview mirror and see him jotting something in his notebook. Lou seems to always be writing in one way or another. And you envy his tenacity. And you wonder if maybe that's what it takes to be a writer.
He steps on the brakes and opens the door to his side. Wait here. What happened? Can you see anything from there? You shake your head. Here he comes. A goat baby? It's hurt, Vic. Although neither of you say anything, you think you know what you have to do. Lee kisses you on the mouth and starts the car. In the back seat, Lou clears his throat. I don't want to be anticlimactic, but... The demonization of the god Pan, Satan, uh, as a male goat. You do know that there are records throughout history of bloody wars against goat men, don't you? The end. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, this is how you get tricked. <laughs> what the fuck? God damn. <laughs> of course. Oh, I wonder I wonder how many endings there are to this. Cause definitely like there came a point where like it felt like we could go for different endings. Um, I could be wrong, maybe, but, like, I, there, I bet there's might be a way for us to, like, save Colt. Eight years later. I don't know, I just, I have a hunch there might be a way for us to save him. Maybe if we keep fighting. Oh, shit, I forgot about the men in black. Oh, there's Goat Boy. <laughs> He's studying. He's got an exam. I like Goat Boy. Goat Boy's a friend. I like him. Oh, look, there's a solitaire mode where we can just play the solitaire minigame. <laughs> Make a creature's accurate drawing. Make a really inaccurate drawing. <laughs> Lose with 25 or more cards to go. So these are like achievements. So we sorted the shelves, we survived the coyote attack, we saw a winged creature. Answer, the, answer properly to an unheard question. Lose with 15 or less cards to go. Listen about the L's. Die all possible death. Watch the credits until the end. Survive all cryptid waves. Maybe that is the end. Holy shit, that was cool. <laughs> Let me look up and see if there's more endings. Um That was that was pretty cool though. I I do like I did like that a lot. That was rad. I love I love this kind of like um cryptid story like that's my fa these are like some of my favorite kinds of like just stuff i love like cryptids and like this specific atmosphere of spooky like because you know it's like there's different atmospheres horror goes for this is a hundred percent like my kind of vibe um i do love it um let's see um Does this have? It's hard to tell because it literally just came out. Who who would be dropping chains? Hey, Greg. Nice five chain. Uh, how do I look at the community hub for this? Is there multiple endings? Uh, don't warn me again for Mothman. I already played it. All 
already played it. Um. Yeah, it doesn't say it, which makes sense. The game literally just came out. Hello, hello. I think, I think that's the whole thing. I think that's the game. I, I'm not too sure. I, I just really, really, really liked it. Um, sorry, I'm just reading a couple things to see if there's like more, more endings. That person played on Linux. Yeah, nothing in here says anything about, um... About multiple endings. So I think that's it. I think that's the whole game. Heck yeah. Which, I mean, that's fine. I don't really have much time left, so... But yeah, welcome, Greg. You just... Sorry, you just missed the whole story. <laughs> you just missed, like, the whole game. This is super dope, though. I'm going to spend some rec... Like, hand some recommends around for this game. This was super cool. And I definitely... Oh, we can go back and we can play Solitaire if we want to. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You can go back to the rules of Solitaire. Three out of four survivors aren't bad. Yeah. Um, I think that's the story, though. I think that's just the story. Um, so I think we're going to call it here, because I have to get ready for work anyways here soon, so I wouldn't even be able to last longer. Sorry for taking off right when you get here, Greg. Oh... Uh, <laughs> That's the whole game, though. Uh, it was super cool. I'm like I said, I'm gonna try and like send some uh, some recommends. Is no one going? No wonder everybody's here. No one's streaming right now. I don't think anyone's going. Well, shoot. You've been here the whole time. That's fair. I, I do not know if you've been here the whole time because I appreciate lurkers and I super respect and appreciate them. I guess we'll just call it then. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Um, I don't know what we're doing next. But, you know, I'll figure it out. Because uh, that was a one and done game. <laughs> which was super dope. Uh, have a good one, y'all. I'll figure out something for next time.